Painting Pepet, written by Linda Raven Lodding and illustrated by Claire Fletcher. Josette Gobet and her rabbit, Pepet, lived at number nine, Rue La Fette, Paris. Josette adored Pepet and took her everywhere. But their favorite thing to do was cuddle on the window seat in the Babette's great room. This great room was filled with fine art. There was a portrait of Josette's mother. There were the paintings of Grand Marais and Grand Pere. There were the paintings of the Petite Babettes, Jeanette, Juliette, and Josette. There was even a portrait of their schnoodle, Frisette. One day, Josette noticed something strange. There was no portrait of Papette. We must find an artist to paint your portrait, said Josette, and it has to be special, just like you. So the two friends set off to Montmartre, where the best artists in Paris painted. Easels filled the square amid the hustle and bustle of people rushing here, there, and everywhere. As soon as they turned the corner, a man in a sailor-striped shirt stopped them. Those ears, he cried. Never have I seen such majestic ears. I must paint this rabbit's portrait. Josette noticed Pepette blushing. Her ears had never been called majestic before. Magnifique, said Josette. We're looking for an artist. The painter propped open his easel and filled his canvas with not one, but two button noses and three rabbit ears. When he finished, he waved his paintbrush in the air and declared his painting a masterpiece. What do you think, he asked. It's nice, said Josette. It's just that Pepette has only one nose and two ears, and Pepette had to agree. Just then, a man with a mustache as wide as bicycle handlebars strolled by. What a divine creature, he said, twirling the ends of her whiskers. Please, I must paint the very essence of her rabbitness. The man painted a most unusual portrait. You like, asked the painter, motioning to his canvas. Josette stood back. It's imaginative, she said, trying to find just the right words. But you painted Pepette quite, well, droopy. And Pepette had to agree. Moments later, another painter wandered by. He stopped in his tracks when he spotted Pepette. That nose, like a faint star twinkling in a misty velvet night. As he bowed to Josette, a shock of black curls flopped over one eye. May I paint your friend? My easel is across the square. Pepette would like that, said Josette. Certainly this artist would paint just the right portrait, she thought. Pepette and Josette hopped to the square until they reached the painter's easel. More and more people gathered around and looked on as he painted a rabbit flying through the clouds. When he finished, he admired his painting. One of my best works. I like the clouds, said Josette, but Pepette doesn't like to fly. She's scared of heights. And Pepette had to agree. That rabbit, said another painter. He peered at Pepette through his round spectacles. What a colorful lady, balloon blue, pansy pink and radish red. Was he talking about Pepette, wondered Josette. May I have the honor of showing the world her colors? Josette nodded. She was, after all, quite curious. When the painter finished, he wiped his brow and revealed his work to Josette. Ta-da! The canvas was filled with splashes and dashes and dots of bright color. Josette considered the painting. It's awfully colorful, but Pepette isn't pink. Ah, yes, he said. 
but through art we can see the world any way we want. The sun was setting on Paris and Josette knew it was time to head home. Merci, she said to the artist, it's been lovely meeting you. And Pipette had to agree. That evening at number nine Rue La Fête in Paris, Josette and Pipette cuddled on the window seat in the great room. Josette sighed. She had hoped that Pipette could have a portrait that showed her wonderfulness, with her soft gray ears that listened to her when she was sad with her heart-shaped nose that twitched when she was thinking, and with her soft arms that held her tight. She had so wanted Pipette to have the perfect portrait. Suddenly, Josette realized what she had to do. What do you think? And she painted the perfect portrait. It was special, just like Pipette. And Pipette had to agree. Here's a little note from the author. It says, Paris in the 1920s when it was an exciting and creative city. Many artists as well as writers, musicians, and fashion designers flocked to Paris to work on their craft. While Josette and Pipette are fictional characters, the artists whom Pipette inspires are based on real artists living and working in Paris at the time. Pablo Picasso, Salvador Dali, Marc Chagall, and Henri Matisse. Today, Montmartre is still an artsy quarter, but long gone are the days when this area was home to some of the world's most renowned artists. Yet, if you use your imagination, you might still see those artists dart along the cobblestone streets, pitch their easels to capture the warm Parisian light, and maybe, just maybe, spot a girl and her beloved rabbit. The end.